Well, it's over. You can see the results here. Uh, ancient, Thai, colonial, modern, future, four size, all went to me. Final score is four to zero. Uh, we ended in the middle of the 14th turn. Rocking Horse Dreams decided that the game was over and there was nothing he could do. Let's let's look at the board before I say any more just so you can see how things sit at the very end. Um, let's zoom out here. There we go. Don't you love when the person with the camera is telling you what operation they're doing with the camera? Um, very good. Okay, so let's take a look at what things look like. So over here, you can see on his turn, he very well could have taken, I mean, he had more than an even chance, definitely, of taking the Ancient Labyrinth. I think he pretty much should have the point there. Okay, so let's just, let's assume he had the Ancient Labyrinth, and that was kind of part of my strategy was to let him have the Ancient Labyrinth. I don't know if you see Pat Garrett here at the end. Um, I kept, I kept trying to put his guys close to the Ancient Labyrinth, so he'd spend his time going for the Ancient Labyrinth, and I, I think that worked out for me, that that notion of picking the places you want to contend and focusing your forces there. Um, so that was one, one part of it. We ended the game with a very interesting situation, and I kind of wanted to see how it worked out. If we look down here at the, um, just south of the Colonial Labyrinth, there's an interesting face-off going on with Boris Arden and Arden Glein over the dead body of Marcus Aris, um, Arden Glein's future brother. I really wanted to see how this turned out. I felt like, um, at least in terms of my inner story that was deep in my heart of hearts, I feel like there was a bond between Arden and Marcus. And I kind of, now that, even as I'm talking, I'm kind of feeling like maybe it's good that it was unresolved, that we're kind of left with this face-off, the, um, the future man over the, the body of the, the future perfection, um, who he was very near and dear to, facing off with this kind of cold modernity, this, 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 um, in the, a character who embodies in a way the the militant side of this game, the um, the combative side of this game, which is which is a lot of what this game is. Um, they're standing at and looking at each other, kind of the the potential, or, or maybe the whatever it is that's standing over the body of the potential, facing off against the very real and concrete and cynical. Um, I don't know. I, I like that, that it ended there, I guess. But maybe, maybe I just have to like how it ends. Um, Geronimo coming up the side, what would that mean? Geronimo is sort of the, um, is, 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 is the past, the, the wild. Um, the wild who has a Terra pistol, which is, uh, I don't know. Um, because I have a hard time letting go, I did roll Boris's shot on Arden Glein because I feel like Rocking Horse Dreams still had a chance to win. I think it was very, very slim, and I can totally respect his decision to um, to forfeit. We we said when we got into this that um, you know we would both have the right to forfeit because this game can be very one-sided, and that's not fun to play. Uh, especially since I'm I'm a lot more experienced in this game. This is maybe his second play, maybe third. I don't know. I, I know he told me about two solo plays. One I don't think even counted because he had the character mix. The character to platter ratio was off for a very um, a tense game. And I forget if he said he got the chance to play with someone else or not. I don't. I feel like he didn't. So anyway, he's very new to this game and. That that really showed, I think, in this area. I got a new tripod. I don't know if you can tell. I'm, really, I'm just learning it right, learning how to use it right now. It's very um, 
feels very mechanical to me how, how I'm stopping to adjust. I, I, please forgive me. Um, the situation over here with Geronimo and the L wave grenade, and you had Milena Erabato and Spartacus, who um, so much the, the hobgoblin chasing after my heels throughout a lot of the game. Um, the move when he had them charge at Geronimo with the grenade, that was a move. I, uh, this, a similar situation I did so many times in my early plays of the game where I had these awesome melee guys and it seems like in your head they should be able to get through and do some damage only to have them totally get shredded. This game does not encourage that once you, you've played it a few times. If they have a gun and you don't, you do not charge them. If they have a gun, you don't move. <laughs> you know? Um, unless you can move instantly into cover. You you stay still um, and yeah, unless you have no other choice and then you get out of the way or you charge, I don't know. But he did have another choice and I think if he were a more experienced player he would have run away. Um, if I were in his shoes I would have done the same thing if I had just been starting playing. So uh, that, was, that was rough on him. Um, but anyway, I'm, I, you know, if we look at the, the stats on the Navy pistol here, if he had amazed, if he had hit with it and amazed on the penetration, Arden Glein would have been dead. Now, what that would have meant is there, was, there would have been a whole pile of treasure right here. Whole pile of weapons. Um, and then he would have had to come and get it. I probably would have just left Geronimo here because the clock was on my side. You know, Geronimo's... Had, had some, some pretty good ranged weapons. However, Geronimo, his ranged weapon attacks aren't very good. He didn't have any, you know, he's got blues. So he still could have, he still could have gotten it. I, you know, I did a test roll. Um, Arden Glein rolled an 11, which was a miss. Or no, no, Boris rolled a, an 11, which was a miss. Um, you know, Arden Glein probably could have killed him next turn. He was down to one life. I can totally see why he... He quit. Uh, the other stalemate was here. This was another thing my experience, and actually something else, the Agent 911 situation. Um, I don't, I'm sure Rocking Horse Dreams was probably talking about how he, <laughs> what a pain in the butt Agent 911 was right here. He was, other than the Ancient Labyrinth, which I let him have, he was very strong in the Colonial Labyrinth, um, Rocking Horse Dreams. He had some great Colonial characters. Pat Garrett among among them, I was very lucky that I was able to keep Pat Garrett keep dismissing and um, banishing him up north, so he was ineffective. Um, but I'm sure he'll talk about what a pain Agent 911 was. That was a result of me knowing more about the game. I I've read some um, I read the forums on the game because I I feel like I I I enjoy this game quite a lot, and so I've been trying to be involved with the forums in the community, which is very, very um, sparse right now, probably because of the game's age and because it appeals to a very weird niche. Um, and so, the, you know, using Agent 911 as this blocker is something that was taught to me. It's not something I think I came about through play. So that was another huge advantage I had. Um, so, you know, here, the big turning point experience. Here, shutting down the Colonial Labyrinth, which was one of his main scoring opportunities. That was, um, you know, reading strategy. The rest of it was luck. I was so unbelievably lucky in this game, and he was so unbelievably unlucky. I, you know, he, at the end, towards the end, when he, it seemed like he maybe had a chance to, to come back due to my blunder um, with forgetting about uh, Annie Oakley's extra card. I kept rolling amazes on stuff, and he wasn't able, you know, he got a couple shots on me, but then I turned around and I amazed on a labyrinth that healed me again. It did end up with Marcus Aris's demise, and I think that could have been, you know, that could have been the start of a turn turnaround, but, you know, he would have had to, he would have had to, one, take out Arden Glein and Geronimo with Boris Andronov, who has one life, or just take off out Arn and Glein and book it north and then take out Paraxian. You know, those were kind of his choices there. He would have had to score in the Ancient Labyrinth, definitely. It seems like he could have done that with who he had, but 
who knows. He, and then he would have also had to be Agent 911, which is a four or better with Annie Oakley. You know, without rolling a five, which she would shoot herself. So, you know, he was, he had a really tough battle, and I can see why he ended it. Um, I have to say, this, this whole experience, this, this play by, um, video and play by email and pho pho photograph has been a part of my, um, part of the rhythm of my day for, I don't know how, we've done this for over a week now. I have a bad memory, but, um, I'm gonna miss it. I'm, I, I feel like I agree with him. It's it's maybe run its course, but you know, to to come home and look at that email, or be at work and look at the email and be like, okay, I have no opportunities for fire. You can go ahead and do your turn, and you know, just have this this kind of game running, this undercurrent running throughout the rest of your life. Really, kind of um, enriches everything in a way. I and I I don't I could see how it might appear as though it's a distraction, but. Um, Really, it just added this kind of, this kind of, it's like a, it's like getting a present all the time. This, this little dose of fun, these little doses of fun, these little flashes of fun that maybe were <laughs> a little healthier um, than, uh, you know, spending a large amount of time playing games with real people cards, which I'm excited to get back to. Um, I'm excited to get back to the tournament, though, you know, I, I, I wasn't really missing it throughout all of that. I, I, um, I really feel like this was uh, a lot of fun, and I hope, like, maybe in a year or so, he would like to go round two of Duel of Ages. Maybe he has some expansions by then, I don't know. Maybe he just has set one. I would love to play it again and do another one of these videos, because I think it's, um, I think it's a lot of fun, and I think, uh, it's... I, I, I don't know what the video is going to look like. He's going to do all the editing and everything, but I, I'm really excited to see what things look like from his perspective. When you, when you play a game with someone face-to-face, -face, you're both seeing the same thing right then, and you're getting the visual cues, you're getting the nonverbal. But still, it's fun to talk about it afterwards and feel and figure out what they were thinking. But the memory is less perfect, I think than the camera and what we're saying at the time, the little bits of thought. And I don't even remember what I was going through during the time. So to see all the footage all together is going to be really exciting for me. Um, and I think it's going to show the game in a certain level that I don't know any other format could capture. I, it's, it's new to my experience, um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see the result. And it's definitely something I would love to do again. Thank you all for watching this. I've really had a great time. Um.